Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Wilthaven by Ollie Jacobs. So this is as part of Todd Dane's Indie Read Along. Haven't done that jingle for a while because I keep forgetting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm going to read you the blurb and then I'm going to go through and share some of my tabs and then give you my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So the blurb. Welcome to Wilthaven, a quiet English town that thrives on local produce, old-fashioned values and survival against the rule of an eldritch abomination. Here you will enjoy endless walks, soothing sounds, forceful avatars, and the kind of joys that only an English township can bring. Please note, this dossier has been compiled by the BPD based on materials found relating to P1983, or Wilthaven as you know it. Treat every sentence, word, image, and syllable with the utmost paranoia. Be safe. Wilthaven is a horror comedy by Ollie Jacobs, who previously mined scares and chuckles from the likes of The Children of Little Thwopping, Film It Cuts, and Bad Sandwich. As always, he hopes you enjoy. So yeah, this is very uh, Lovecraftian and eldritch, hints of Dracula in it because it's an epistory novel. And um, also like some Stephen King inspired bits here and there as well, I would say. Uh, right at the start we have also by Ollie Jacobs and I like he's got featured in Flash Fear and Subject Verb Object. And Subject Verb Object is an anthology that uh, I collated and pulled together. So uh, towards the start, I mean, all the, throughout this, all of the things that we read have got like the context in which they were found. So for example, here we have Mayor's Welcome, and I like this. Found addressed to a Mrs. Violet Skinner of West Wickham, Buckinghamshire. This document was duly returned to sender, but ended up lost in the postal network until BPD agents working within the service discovered it and delivered it to the relevant department on November 1965. And uh, yeah, I live in High Wickham, so West Wickham's just down the road from me. I also thought this was very cool, so we get like a book within a book, so uh, an adventure into the dark heart of man's curiosity, or the musing of Charles Crest. And uh, so yeah, we've got like little index here and, you know, chapters. And, and I just think that it actually worked quite well. I think it's hard to do a book within a book. And for example, Stephen King tried it with Paul Sheldon's book in Misery, and I really didn't enjoy that. Um, whereas I think here, Ollie pulls it off, you know. I thought this was a great little uh, phrase from this story. A renowned navigator such as Lord Goff could lead himself out of a sack of ink in a tar pit. It does feel as though this book within the book was written by somebody else, you know, which is difficult to do. And then um, there's a guy, Lord Goff, he's like basically speaking in tongues or having like delirious ramblings. And this is a great little uh, use of words where he says, Only on occasion could I hear his words, but I still could not understand them, for they fell into a word salad that even now I cannot recall. A word salad, I like that, good imagery there. Uh, we have a reference to Renfield Close. And I assume that's um, a nod to Dracula. And uh, this is cool because this, this uh, ties back in with one of Jacobs' other releases, which I have read as well. And also it's found in Saskatoon, which is where our friends um, Elaine and Mark Allard will come from, uh, who are like graphic novelists and uh, they have a publishing house as well. And Elaine's actually previously done some of the cover art. I don't know if it was her who did this one. I don't know if it actually says. But um, yeah, it was just cool to get that little nod. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and read it out. The Children of Little Thwopping. Item was found in Saskatoon Public Library by Canadian BPD Division, Les Mounties, and reported to the UK BPD Division in the 16th of March 1980. Book had apparently been in circulation for 14 years after being donated by unknown parties in 1966. Agent Will of Les Mounties is investigating further into the anonymous donor, but due to minimal leads, follow-up is deemed improbable. Book is titled The Children of Little Thwopping and is credited to Howard Williams, so far, BPD officials have not been able to trace any evidence of a Howard Williams, nor the book or any other titles in various bibliographic databases. The book has a publication copyright dating 23rd of March 1952, and is noted to have been published by Wilthaven Press. Given what we know about Wilthaven, aka P1983, we can safely assume that such a publishing house does not exist. And now we have a list here of the uh, symptoms that can occur if you read uh, The Children of Little Swapping, and I can attest to these symptoms as I had many of them myself. Nausea, migraines, heart palpitations, violent tendencies, erratic gastric expulsions, non-existence, excessive hemorrhaging, constipation, spontaneous arachnid propulsion, instant biological duplication, joint pain, loss of colour, transdimensional ruptures, unknown, blackouts, angular violation, infinite vomiting, urinary variation, fever, paradoxical anti-existence, artistic rash, pelvic erosion, Unstoppable sexuality, runny nose. We also get um, a note here. Finally reports that the book is readily available through online stockists is undetermined. Investigations will continue. But I'm sure this was actually written in like 1966 or, you know, theoretically. So they wouldn't have uh, 
wouldn't have known that necessarily. But I just attribute that to some of the weird timey wimey stuff that occurs in, you know, the Emberons of Wilthaven. And uh, we get this uh, quote in one of the newspapers. It is true that we've had days of purest night, but never to this scale. I believe it was equated to something I call Fenton Black, which is a type of black that is more black than we've ever known before. A black so black that you wouldn't think anything was there. Which reminds me of the colour ba uh, Vanta Black, which is patented to Anisha Kapoor so that no other artist can use it. And it's meant to be the blackest black. You'd look good in Vanta Black, the blackest of blacks, built from a forest of carbon nanotubes on aluminium foil. Mm. I can't remember the rest of that poem, but I did write a poem about Vanta Black back in the day. Right, so then we get this cool bit where there's an old photo of me in it. So all of the photos in here are like super... Uh, I think the colours are inverted in various of the bits and bobs. Um, but yeah, Ollie asked if he could use this photo of me and it's for a, uh, a music poster for a band. Get Ready to Rock with to Kelly Lee featuring hits like Fool for Thought, Huktar Blues, I Sacrifice My Love for a Ham Sandwich, My Inverted Heart and Ain't No Curfew, Hold Me Down. And then here we have a lost dog. Uh, answers to Lucky Lou, Lulu, Actir, the Destroyer of Dimensions, Defiler of Time, Ravager of Senses or Loopy Lou. And this is Olive's dog, Lady. Uh, we get a reference to the Sawyers and uh, their boy Tom, which I assume is a reference to Tom Sawyer. And we get a pub called the Bell's View as well. And there's a pub in High Wycombe called the Bell View, which uh, I've played at a bunch of times, actually. But it was uh, one of Olive's, Ollie's old haunts as well. Then he goes to the Grady Hotel. And I'm not sure, is that a reference to The Shining? Wasn't the caretaker of The Shining called Grady? Or am I just stretching at this point, you know? <laughs> and then someone's got a little note just saying... Uh, Hope to see you all very soon. Send my love to my parents and tell Agent Hussey that I lost the game. I wish I could see his face. Is that a reference to the game as in that old um, internet-y thing? Because <laughs> if so, I've just lost the game. And then, yeah, at the end he has a list of people who he wants to thank, uh, including me. Hooray, because I let him use my photo. So all in all, yeah, I really enjoyed this. I think it's probably one of my favourites of Ollie's books. I would give it a 4.25 out of 5. Uh, definitely not one to read though if you don't like, uh, again, these kind of, um, these narratives where it's made up of like different clippings and stuff as opposed to just a straightforward narrative. But actually it does work really well and it does like a great job of creating this image of this town of Wilthaven, which is kind of creepy. I'm now expecting to accidentally end up there sometime. A bit Twilight zone you know? So yeah, well written and uh, I liked a lot of the little in-jokes here as well um, that, I've, that I've highlighted to you guys. So there we have it, that's what I thought of Wilhaven by Ollie Jacobs. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you're planning on reading this book, and if so, let me know what you thought of it after you read it, I guess. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.